What vitamins are best for your eyes? If you are interested in finding out, keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, eye makeup health, and a little bit about my life here in Hawaii. So if any of that interests you, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you can follow along. All right, today we are talking about vitamins and supplements. Likely if you are here, you are someone that is just interested in maximizing your health to the best possible. And I get it, though I'm actually really terrible about taking my own vitamins and supplements. How do you know which ones are actually effective for your eyes? So of course you probably know that the vitamin and supplement industry, especially here in the United States, is not regulated. So that means that sometimes not all of the ingredients are the exact same as what's been proven in clinical trials. So let's take, for example, age-related macular degeneration. This is one of the first examples of a medical condition where vitamins and minerals were shown to be of benefit. So first, what is macular degeneration? Macular degeneration is when there is a disruption in the centermost aspect of your retina called the macula. Sometimes it's from the development of something called drusen underneath the macula. Sometimes there's leaky blood vessels underneath the macula. All of it results in loss of central vision. It affects a lot of people worldwide. In fact, it's one of the, the most common causes of vision loss in the United States. So now that you know what macular degeneration is, they did a couple studies called the Age-Related Eye Diseases Studies, AREDS for short. And they looked at various concoctions of vitamins and minerals to see if that helped slow macular degeneration in people that already have it. And they found that it did. And this is what's so amazing because they've got the ingredients listed right here from the AREDS study, so you can take a look at that. But what they did find is that if you are a smoker, the beta carotene that was in this formulation caused an increased risk of lung cancer. So that's obviously not really good. You can tell people don't smoke, but if they're a lifelong smoker, that's really hard to just quit like that. So then they did another study called AREDS2, called Age-Related Eye Disease Study number two, and they took out the beta carotene, and you can see the ingredients here and compare the two. So basically both of them have vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, and copper. And then instead of the beta carotene, the newer formulation has lutein. So that's where you hear all about lutein for eye health. And we're gonna get to lutein totally separately on its own. But this is where lutein first started to get that buzz about being so important for eye health. Now, here's the thing. A lot of the vitamins that are marketed towards macular degeneration, well, unfortunately, not all of them have this correct formulation that was shown in the studies to be effective. So when you actually look at the 11 most commonly sold, most popular vitamins in the country that are sold for macular degeneration, only four of them have the proper formulation. That means seven of them don't have the proper formulation. So these are the vitamins you want, especially if you're worried about macular degeneration and you already have some of the early stages of macular degeneration. This, it's really not sure if it's going to help prevent macular degeneration. The studies haven't shown that to be quite true yet, but this is the dosages and these are the ingredients you want. So all of these are really important. All right, let's look at another supplement, fish oil. We talk a lot about fish oil and ophthalmology. Fish oil has some really great benefits for heart health, for brain health, and also for eye health. Fish oils are great because they help you absorb the very important vitamins A and E, which we've already talked about are useful for the eyes. Additionally, a lot of ophthalmologists think that fish oil or omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids are good for dry eyes. But when you look at all of the data, the studies are kind of mixed as to how effective effective the omega-3s are. Some might say it's not, again, in the right percentage, not the right type of omega-3, not the right type of omega-6. There's all different kinds 
of fatty acids, very many of them. So sometimes when you're looking at all of the data and all of the research and all of the studies about omega-3s and omega-6s, and there's so many different kinds of fatty acids, it can be hard to compare and see if something is really effective or not. A really big article came out that people that were using 3,000 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids had no improvement in dry eyes when compared to people that were just using placebo. But again, you have to look at the different concentrations and formulations. If you are currently on fish oil or omega-3s, omega-6s, and you find that it's really helpful for your dry eyes, then continue using it because there's also so many other benefits of it as well. So this is one that I still recommend, though the data is very mixed about it. I also find it really helpful in kids or adults with chalazion, also called styes, because it just helps liquefy the blocked oil glands, which are what's causing the styes. So fish oil is still on my list of recommendations, though the data is mixed. Vitamin D. This is another one that's gained a lot of traction recently because there have been a lot of studies in kids about how to slow the worsening of their nearsightedness. I've done a couple of videos on that. And one of the most important things is two hours a day of outdoor time has been shown to be helpful at slowing nearsightedness, also called myopia, in children all the way up until young adulthood, like early 20s. Well, the thought is, what about the sun is helpful for these kids and young adults? And it's possible that it might be the vitamin D. Some studies have shown that people who are more nearsighted have lower serum concentrations of vitamin D. Other studies haven't shown that. But if you are vitamin D deficient, and interestingly, I mean, I'm well over 20s, but even living in Hawaii, I guess because I wear so much sunscreen and wear my hats and everything, I'm actually vitamin D deficient. So it's something that they have to test for you. It might not be a bad idea if you're an adult. Now with a child, I would always recommend that you talk to your pediatrician regarding the dosage. Some people are recommending on online forums like 2000 international units, but you always wanna talk to your pediatrician before you give your child any kind of vitamin or supplementation because you can be giving them a toxic dose, especially for their size and their weight. But vitamin D is something that's got some interesting research coming out and is still on my like maybe checklist. It's not something I give my children personally yet, but again, I live in Hawaii, so we've got a lot of natural vitamin D here production going on. Okay. Now we're gonna get to lutein and zeaxanthin. You've probably heard of these. Lutein we talked about a little bit earlier in terms of macular degeneration. Zeaxanthin is also another really popular supplement that people have uh, come to find is helpful for eye health. So what they are are naturally occurring carotenoids. They are naturally found in our eyes and they're a defense against ultraviolet light, which is why people have started gravitating towards them as being beneficial for eye health. The thing is, even though it's naturally occurring in your eyes, your body starts to lose the lutein and zeaxanthin, so you have to replenish it with foods. If you want to just do it with your diet, then yellow and green vegetables are the way to go. Corn, broccoli, collard greens, asparagus, and spinach are the plants that have both lutein and zeaxanthin, or you can get it in supplement form as well. Egg yolks is another one that has a lot of lutein. And the thought is because they're naturally occurring in the macula, that centermost aspect of your retina, which is responsible for your central vision, that supplementing them will be helpful. There's also some data that supplementing them might help with some of the light-induced damage to the lens, which is basically what a cataract is. So dosage-wise, you want to do 10 milligrams a day for lutein and two milligrams a day for zeaxanthin. So there certainly is a potential role for lutein and zeaxanthin when you look at the studies for both macular degeneration, cataracts, and even retinitis pigmentosa. And now we're gonna get to the top three vitamins that really have been shown to be a benefit to the eyes. That's vitamins A, C, and E. Vitamins C and E were in the macular degeneration trials for the vitamins that will help for macular degeneration, but also vitamin A, which everybody knows, they think that it's gonna make you be able to see at night, it's not, but a vitamin A deficiency certainly can cause night blindness. So vitamin A, it's a fat soluble vitamin, it's excellent for the cornea and as well for the retina. It's related to white blood cell function, bone remodeling and endothelial cell maintenance. So this is an easy one that you can start incorporating again into your diet 
or if you want to take it as a vitamin or a supplement, the recommended dose for men is 900 micrograms daily and 700 micrograms daily for women. Now let's look at vitamin C, ascorbic acid. This one is different. It's a water soluble vitamin. You guys probably know vitamin C is in tons of like orange colored fruit. It's a very great and easy way to up your levels of vitamin C. It's important because of its immunologic properties. It can help regenerate tissues due to the collagen formation and it also has an antioxidant effect. So the recommended dose for men is 90 milligrams and 75 milligrams for women. Vitamin E is another fat soluble vitamin. It has several different forms, tocopherols and tocotrienols. And it's a really important macronutrient, which is just great also, not just for eye health, but cardiovascular health as well. In addition, it's good for neurologic and age related changes, which is why I think they initially incorporated it into the macular degeneration trials because it's age-related macular degeneration. The recommended dosage for this is 15 milligrams a day. Now there's a really interesting study that just came out. I know I say everything is interesting, but I thought this was really cool because what they did was they combined vitamins A, C, and E, and they found that people that have this in combination, and in the study it was really more of the people had it in their diets, not taking it as a vitamin or supplement, but they took way more and they just ingested way more than the recommended dosage as per the vitamin guidelines. Those people had a lower risk of glaucoma than people that had lower vitamin A, C, and E ingestion. In fact, over the 20,000 people who filled out the survey, there was a 47% decrease in glaucoma in the people with a higher vitamin A, C, and E score. But again, their main source of of intake was food and diet. So make sure to check out just my superfoods for eye health video if you have not checked that out because some of these vitamins and minerals are actually most of them you can just get from foods itself. But if you are worried about your diet, you don't think it's as well balanced or full of rainbow vegetables and fruits as it should be, then these are some of the vitamins and minerals that I would hit. Vitamins A, C, and E, lutein and zeaxanthin, possibly vitamin D, and maybe some fish oil, omega-3 and omega-6s. All right, guys, I hope this information was helpful for you. If you have any questions, if you've started vitamins, if you take fish oil, whatever, let me know if you found it to be a benefit. I'd love to hear. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. It's good to see you. Bye.